And let's look at the fourth attack that we have. The fourth attack is again ransomware. You guys know I love ransomware, right? Uh, so this is about the CNA financial company and it's very close to us. It's in 2021, last year. So let's see why is this attack on our list? Because it's not bigger than what happened with uh, WannaCry. So if we look at, um, uh, at this attack, we have bleeping computers issuing an article about how they breached CNA. We have the Chicago Tribune uh, issuing articles. Bloomberg saying that this is literally a $40 million ransom. Then again, we have insiders saying the same thing. And if we search it, it's still under the biggest uh, and most searched uh, cyber attack, which is one cry. Now, uh, if we look further into this particular one, let's see what attack type was this. Of course, what attack title? Let's put this on the page as well. How did this happen? So the attack title that I chose for this one is the biggest, at least declared, cyber ransom payout in the history of uh, the known trackable history, right? Uh, it was done by Phoenix Crypto Locker, and the attack type was a compromised update, admin credential harvesting, and ransomware. So how did this happen? Basically, attackers first breach an employee's workstation using a fake uh, and malicious browser update delivered via a legitimate website. That's the problem. So basically, these attackers hacked into a legitimate website and placed a patch that was compromised. Then, after that, they compromised elevated privileges using a tool similar to Mimikatz, right? A credential harvester and perform lateral movement to start reconnaissance. That happened for 15 days. In the 16th day, which is actually the fun part, the attackers have disabled the security systems of one of the biggest insurance companies in the United States, wiped any trace of any backup that they had on the network, and then last but not least, they deployed the ransomware. They did not stand a chance when this happened, literally, because everything was disabled. Even if they wanted to do something, they could not, which was the most frustrating thing for their team. Now, some wall facts about this. The full restore of their business happened in 63 days. And they are huge guys. They have resources, they have funds, they have teams, they have outside contractors. They have it all. It's such a big company and they have it all. In that attempt, more than 15,000 systems were encrypted in a very, very short time. And guess what then happened? The attackers used a public web transferring tool, MegaSync, right? Mega Transfer. I believe some of you guys might have heard about it to exfiltrate data, which is super funny, right? We should all have public transferring tools banned on the network, but this one was not. Then they literally paid the biggest ransom ever recorded. And guys, again, this is what has been recorded, but some other companies might have paid even bigger, but they didn't want to come out, right? Maybe it was not made public and so on and so forth. By the way, we at Heimdall have an official position that you should never pay a ransom because you don't have any guarantee that they will actually deliver what they need to deliver. Now, how to avoid such an attack? I have a few versions here, right? So secure patching is the first one. Uh, guys, no matter what patching tool you use in, uh, uh, that's out there, make sure that the packages that get to your computers are vetted. Basically, any, uh, any patching tool should not take directly the package from the vendor and put it on your computer. They should actually be the ones that decompose that package, make sure there's no malware, make sure there's no backdoor, and only then push it onto your computer. And we as experience, we found one vendor in history that actually gave us a, a compromised patch and we sent it back. And that one vendor, we, we shall not name it, uh, have has retracted all the patches, made an urgent announcement, and also placed a uh, a big warning note on their website and thanked us for helping them. Then we have privilege access management. 
nobody in your network should have admin rights and a password to those admin rights. Uh, I know they need to use admin rights. So for that, please make sure you have a different method of giving them the admin rights, like a PAM tool. Of course, if you're interested in a PAM tool, you know you can book a demo at the end of the, uh, the session using the form and uh, our team can show you about the PAM tool. Uh, then we had have, have endpoint security with anti-tampering. So basically that means if something tries to uninstall your endpoint security, they should not be possible. Uh, they should not be allowed to uninstall it, even if they have admin rights, guys, because this is what happened to them. They had admin rights. Uh, then we also need to have encryption protection tools. Let's say everything falls, right? If everything falls, you still need to have the last layer of defense. And this is an encryption protection tool. And we have a question from the audience. How do we handle domain admin credentials? Well, we would recommend not using domain admin credentials most of the time for your day-to-day -day operations. Of course, domain admin credentials are still required and they are important. But for your day-to-day -day operations, they should not be on all the computers. And of course, you, you can put a domain group, let's say IT administrators, in your PAM policy in Heimdall. And whenever they connect to a computer or a server, they will be allowed to automatically elevate with a click of a button. They won't need that domain admin credentials. But of course, if you guys want more details, we're here and we can provide you that. 